All right, so today we're going to show you the poor man's version of a leak down tester. So as you can see, this is an Onan. Uh, any of any engine that has the, you know, the flathead, which is what this is, is a flathead, and the cavities like this, you can do this little trick on. So. You have to be able to turn the crank. So I'm turning the crank. Right now, this would be the wasted spark side because the valve is open. So we're gonna turn it until it comes to top dead center again. All right, now it's top dead center. Both valves are closed. And here's the magic trip. It's so expensive, but you'll have to afford it. You get a picture of water. Picture of water, not a picture. A picture wouldn't do you much good, but a picture would do you much more. And you backfill the cavity. Oh, look at that. That's what you call a major amount of valve leak on the intake. You know that's intake because that's where the carb was sitting. The intake uh, was actually sitting connected to the carb. So, right there would be a, a major performance loss. Another thing I'd like to point out is this one's not horrible on the compression uh, blow by, but this area right here is what they call piston wash. And that's an early sign of blow by. What happens is, is uh, while it's compressing and firing, uh, a little bit is leaking by there, and that's why that part of the piston is clean. Very common on this flathead style engine so now when we go over to this side you can see that the valves are open barely you can't get it in there and so we need to turn engine over one more full time there we go top dead center <laughs> try not to dribble all over like I just did because it kind of makes it hard now the intake leaking is normal and the exhaust valve leaking is abnormal. So I filled the exhaust side, nothing's coming out. And that's pretty much normal. Fill on the intake side. Yeah. So I must have one. Only one valve that needs a. Sorry about all this. That's what happens when you don't have a cameraman. So, I have one side that leaks on the intake and one side that does not. So, that tells me my job got a little bit shorter. That's holding water just fine, and if it holds water, it's going to hold compression. This one here, for some reason, is a healthier side because the piston wash crossed here, very minimal compared to the other side. And what's unusual that it would happen this way is this is also the oil filter side. Generally, this side takes the most abuse because people don't use the seal. That's supposed to go on the uh, oil filter to the shroud, which then makes that 
I don't remember where I put the seal. How do you like this for videography? This sucks. But anyway, there's a rubber gasket that costs a whole three dollars in some sense that seals and this filter is longer than normal oh i'm getting a little bit of drip there so you got to give it time to leak but uh it's kind of one of these deals where as soon as that other side leaked and now that this one's leaking slowly it's kind of a deal where you you're there you should just do them all uh and that'll be valve lapping and with the valve lapping it's uh done with hand tools basic hand tool and uh when you lap the valves you'll get a storyline basically where the contact with the seat and the valve you'll get to see that mark form as you use the brace of the lapping compound and you'll know then whether or not you need uh machine work done to get the seat and the valve back to a serviceable point so went too long already with all my stuff so we'll end it there but yeah how was that real expensive huh I know that I need to get some power back by taking care of my valves, which is very, very normal for a, a running engine even. And so this one's going to get a valve job, but not anything deeper.